I it's going <clears throat> live right now. Sounds good. Ba, 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 ba. Oh man, we're live, we're live. I don't see me yet, but I think we're live. Oh, yes, we are. Are we live, Mike? Uh, looks like we are. So uh, we how, is, are alive. how is your holidays? All good, all good. It was uh, <clears throat> like I'm assuming most people's was. It was uh, slow and steady, just kind of chill. Um, did the whole, you know, watching the ball drop or the commemorative year roll in just online and everything, of course. Um, during New Year's Day, just went to a local... Um, uh, shrine and dropped like a five yen coin in the thing ring the little bells there's like nobody there actually nobody there it was just a local one it wasn't a big tourist place and uh yeah man just you know direct family dinner and stuff like that no no outside people so yeah man how how was uh how was yours uh well new year's was like pretty chill and like i live in a you know in vancouver and it's like always pretty busy around here but like yeah for like New Year's Eve and New Year's Day, there was like literally like nobody, just like people walking right? dogs. That's like all yeah. I saw. And, uh, you know, everything basically was closed New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. And then, you know, uh, then it's the weekend. So, you know, nothing's open. Like cafes and stuff are open. Like Whole Foods was like open, but like, um, <clears throat> you know, not a lot of... Um, you know other Events places stuff, yeah like course. you know yeah. banks and stuff like that which i needed to do some banking so uh i couldn't i can't really do it until monday now so right um but as you can see everything there's boxes everywhere now <laughs> like, i see that man you're getting ready to, you're finally moving you've been there for a while man that's like that's a home kind of thing yeah so uh plants tv computer like my like patio furniture that's basically like the only stuff that i have left to do and like obviously my pc but i'm not gonna pack that to like the day of because like i do all my work here we do youtube yep. lives i do all my like you know article editing stuff like that so uh you know actually uh as you know peter i have blue eyes right yes and I actually found out something very interesting uh, about that everyone blue. has blue eyes. No, so it's true. Up, up until about six to ten thousand years ago, everyone had brown eyes, and okay, yeah. th there was an abnormality yeah. uh, by like some you know somewhere around like the Black Sea, um, and uh, basically it was everyone with blue eyes is all traced back to just one guy um one guy one like gene pool family or one dude just one Some guy, guy. yeah what? so Crazy. he had he had a genetic mutation uh affecting the ocaa2 gene in the chromosomes which resulted in the creation of a switch which literally turned off the ability to produce brown eyes. And what? it was around that time that like <clears throat> six, 10,000 years ago that like, you know, we basically were like an agrarian, like architectural, like a uh, argue, like a, uh, like, you know, uh, planting things instead of hunting things, you know? Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. because people were like farming, they would deliver their farm stuff to like a town and like they would meet a girl in the town, get married. She would come and like live on the farm and stuff. They would have kids. The kids would have blue eyes. Their kids had blue eyes. So it's like, multiplication multiplication so i but just thought that was interesting blue eyes though because it's you mean light eyes because like my mom has gray eyes my brother's got blue eyes and like my grandma has like blue green eyes kind of thing so you just mean like non-brown eyes basically is what you're talking about yeah but yeah. The, uh, like i'm talking about blue eyes specifically so they actually trace back like genetically where blue eyes actually like came from from so i thought that that was just interesting because like i have blue eyes obviously so yeah no a, that's i have a vested interest in finding you, out, you like, are derived stuff. from one guy like however long ago six to ten thousand years ago that's crazy i didn't know that um i knew like obviously brown eyes are more common because everyone from like 
you know, basically near the equator, like Singapore, Africa, ev everyone near the equator basically has brown eyes for the most part. I have brown eyes. Um, but yeah, uh, that's crazy, man. Wow, I didn't know that. But yes, let's welcome in 2021, everyone. Thank you very much. 2020 was miraculous. All thanks to you guys. We've been doing these uh, lives for the past seven or eight weeks now to kind of give back and um, uh, just kind of you know, comments, uh, we, we got, we got a comment last time saying, why don't we answer comments anymore? Well, the reason being, we used to have 20,000 subscribers where we had a video, 10 comments, we could really get in on every comment. Now, some of our videos have 700,000 views, 800,000 views. It, it's realistically a little bit troublesome for us yeah, to go through like a thousand you know, comments. 816 comments. And then once we're done, we're like, oh my God, and 40 more come in. We just can't do that. So we give out uh, two hours of our time each personally, maybe three hours sometimes on these lives to just give back and basically answer all your questions. So that's why we're here and we're going to continue doing this through 2021. Might be a little bit of a hiccup for Michael, I believe, because depending on where you're going to be, uh, if it's a weekend or something, you might not be able to do a live if you're moving. Uh, I'll be able to like uh, at least like use my like phone yeah. or like laptop like so you'll be able to actually like see me but okay. i don't know if my computer and like internet and like everything will be set up we don't but... know if this particular setup will exist but we're gonna we'll work with it so like if we can't do a saturday we'll do a sunday we'll do a wednesday but we'll keep you guys updated but basically every week we're gonna be doing this so yeah i mean you know the same time and everything it's just like you know my setup my setup like probably will be totally different so uh, yeah. you know, I, I could do it like on my iPad or iPhone cause they have zoom for like every like major platform and stuff. Oh yeah. You could just so, hold your phone out or put it on like a little rig or something to be like, like hey, a tripod guys, or while something. You're sitting in the alleyway with all your boxes waiting for your new house. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll, I'm probably be moving this week. Uh, probably wow. soon. Thursday. Yeah. Uh, so that'll leave me like two days to at least like set up like my computer and get like, yeah all my like you know i i don't know like what the ethernet like modem situation like is it what well you can just use <laughs> you can just hotspot your phone that's probably <laughs> what I'll, data. that's probably what i'll do i mean i have yeah. like unlimited data like for my plan it's just like it gets throttled once it gets past like 50 gigs right uh i'm gonna actually go to two questions right now before we get into everything because uh people want to know michael are you moving out of vancouver to some place that is more reasonable question mark lol that's from darren n uh so i'm moving like west like more west than i am now so i live so like more right expensive by... vancouver darren yeah so i live like in an area where it's like mostly apartment buildings condos and stuff i'm like three blocks from like uh, Kitsilano Beach. So if you like Google map it or whatever, just like type in Kitsilano Beach, like in your thing, you'll kind of like see the sort of na a neighborhood. So I'm moving like about 20 blocks or 30 blocks like west and I'm moving from a condo uh, into like a four or five bedroom house. So it's just going to be me living there. So I, I just need more space. You know, I need like a dedicated room just for like my office here so i could like tailor art on the wall and stuff the acoustics yeah. will like be better um you know have like a dedicated room for like all my product review type shots so it's just more space you know yeah. um yeah. so yeah and i've you know i've lived in houses before but i've always like had roommates so this will be like the first house that i've you know moving into where it's like i'm just going to be like living there in like a big house so i'm kind of excited about that like Front yard, backyard, gardens, like rose bushes, flowers, a gazebo, yeah, stuff like that. So that that'll be nice. It'll be nice to like suntan and like you know the in the summer and like have like a total lawn to my all, all to myself and stuff. So I, I'm really looking forward to that. But like my rent is like basically going to double, so I'm not looking forward to that. But I am looking forward to just like having like a home to call my own for like the next like four or five years. Yeah, no, totally. That's going to be good. Lots of space. <clears throat> uh, two people asked this. Mao Law and Ace of Base, paid member, said, when are you going to announce the winner of the iReader tablet? You guys are correct. We are late to the game on that because uh, it has been the holiday season. Don't worry. The names are locked in and they are all put in the automatic generator. People that are a paid member have been entered, of course, 10 times. People that have entered the contest normally will be entered once. We put all those names in a generator. We click generate and it's literally a 
a second, a name just pops up and it's just completely random. We then go to YouTube and say, you have won. If that person responds, we verify their ID and we send it to you absolutely for free. If that person doesn't respond because it's a dummy account or something with which undoubtedly a lot of YouTube entries are, uh, we will go to another member by just erasing that name clicking generate again and make a new uh, announcement. So yeah, basically we'll announce it today. We're a little bit late to that. Sorry, it's been the holidays and everyone's kind of been off and it's just been me and Mike for the last, you know, we hold down the fort, everyone else, Kelly, John, um, Miki, everyone else is just kind of like, uh, you know, normal working hours, but we, we hold down the fort. So uh, yeah, it will be announced today. But uh, yeah, let's talk about some e-readers and stuff, Mike. Um, Dasung twenty five. Oh, speaking oh, of oh. like uh, like Cancels. holidays and stuff, I've been watching <laughs> Cobra Kai season three. How is that? Speaking of holidays, uh, well, because like it just like got released like on like New Year's like day. Oh, I, I thought it was like a holiday movie or something. Uh, no, it's like you know, it's sort of season three just like came out a lot sooner than a lot of people were like expected. So if you guys have never seen Cobra Kai, it was originally on, it was like a YouTube red like production for like the first season or two. And then yeah. it got moved to like Netflix and Netflix sort of like bought the rights to it. So um, the people like the showrunners and the like, you know, the producers and everything, they're all still saying the same. So I yeah. just like watched a few episodes and I, I really like it because like, it's like, it's like all the people from like the original Karate Kid movie, like the first one, and this is like yeah. where they are like thirty years later. So it's like and some they're of all... the original actors and everything are in. Yeah, there, all the original yeah. actors except for like the Mr. Miyagi guy, which actually like died like mm. I think like uh, seven or eight, maybe ten years ago. Okay. But like he, like they actually like show like deleted footage of like him t teaching daniel larusso like that didn't actually make the movies so it seems like kind oh, of like a, yeah i get it yeah. yeah that's cool so nice. i've been like sort of like watching that like a, like a bit so that's been like my guilty pleasure and i saw um um a series also on netflix called snowpiercer which was like really good it's like it's an introspective on like the the class system I, but set on like a train like in the future when like you know uh just the world's gone to like hell and um people are like on a train so you have like the people at the back of the train which are like the undesirables and then you have the people at the front of the train which are like the bourgeois and then everywhere like in the middle you know what i mean right so it's like yeah. an or it's like an orwellian like class divide like type system and they only had one season, I think like 12 episodes, but it was like really good. Like I, uh, I, there was a movie called Snowpiercer and I didn't like it. I like, I tapped out watching it like after like 20 minutes and then uh, they did like a series on it. And I was like hooked from like episode one. I'm like, this is actually pretty good. Like high production values, like good acting. It was just like, yeah. I mean, just the, the overall theme of it was just, unlike a lot of other type of like Netflix originals that they do, which kind of like are all the same after a while, like the same type of formula. Yeah. Cool. That's good. That's good. Uh, yeah, man. Dasung released a 25 inch monitor. If you guys don't know who Dasung is, Dasung started just as uh, a secondary monitor company. They have 13.3 inch monitors. They're soon to release a not an e-reader it's called, which is a little bit smaller. They have no OS for the most part. They have no onboard anything, no UI. You can't touch anything. You plug it in and it's a monitor. It's made primarily for people that need to cut down on the blue light, on LCDs, on LEDs. They want e-ink in its place. Typically they have a 13 and Michael just did a screen share and they are making a 25 inch e-ink monitor. They are very capable. Don't worry. The Dasung is actually one of the best, if not the best uh, refresh based uh, centric companies. They, they have the best kind of refresh. Everything moves. Everything's fluid. It's not like a gigantic Kindle where you turn a page and it takes six seconds. That's not what it's about. So um, yeah, it's, it's looking to be pretty good, but uh, it's three thousand dollars, Mike, is what you've written in your article there. Yeah. So 
it's gonna be like around a couple pennies, it's, it's around twenty thousand yuan, which uh, basically accounts to three thousand sixty one dollars yeah. US. Uh, it could be more, it could be less, but it's probably around there. So uh, up until this time, Dasung has released like um, you know basically four different 13.3 inch yeah, the one, like two, monitors three, and then the pro right right so yeah. uh you can <laughs> see sort of like here this is like the 13.3 variant so um you know uh, the latest gen that they had was uh front light and a touch screen two things that they never really had before so uh that is like you know what is it like 1200 1300 dollars or maybe a little bit less <laughs> dude yeah they're, they're pricey man but but if you look at it i like actually look at the video and stuff you guys can go over to our site and look at these videos it moves exactly the way they're showing it this isn't some fake promo video with the guy wearing a dasung shirt saying this is the best thing ever no it actually does move as fluid as that it doesn't show color of course because there's just no way to do that we've color Color's barely broken past six inches, never mind 13, never mind 25. So, uh, yeah, man, look at this guy. He's like showing the Kindle up against it. It's massive. Yeah. So, if, if you saw from like the, the earlier pictures that I showed you, all of their devices have been like black that needed a stand. This actually looked, this is a, like a legit like monitor. And it is. Instead <clears throat> of like being an all black design, like 13, 13.3 inches is very small compared to 25 inches. It would like basically fit in this little area here. Yeah. Like you actually get like a huge area and you can see that the buttons have been redesigned. Like, you know, it's a gunmetal silver. It comes with a stand. It actually is compatible with a VESA mount now, whereas like the previous gens really didn't really have a good VESA mount like compatibility. Yeah. So uh, I'm excited about this because split screen view, uh, this is going to be obviously pricey, but it's like, you know, primarily aimed at people that just can't look at like LCD monitors, it's true. Yep. like OLED monitors and stuff like that. You could actually, you know, desktop up until this point has done secondary monitors. This <clears> is a <throat> monitor that you can use as your primary this is gonna monitor. Be exact is going to be a primary monitor. Yeah, so if you actually have an older desk song, you could actually use this and then use like the 13.3 as like a secondary monitor. So you can see people coding using like Windows Excel. I mean, your total workload, uh, if you work from home, you can do everything on here as you would like a typical like monitor. Uh, they do have various like expanded refresh modes, like such as like an A2 mode and an yeah. A2 mode plus, but they call them like Floyd. So you look at this, the, this is like an actual like, you know, this is what you could expect from scrolling around and stuff like that. I mean, it's the response time has been increased like exponentially. So uh, that's very cool. So uh, basically it's going to have a resolution of 3,200 by 800. Um, it's, you know, it doesn't have an internal battery. It doesn't have, um, you know, no, processing wouldn't. memory. It, it's basically a monitor. So this looks like a proper monitor. So this is like the first product that Desung has ever made that actually looks like a monitor. Whereas like previous like types of things, like, um, it's just been like a black block so you don't really you don't really have that monitor -y type feel right out of the box yeah so yeah see that's is, all it is it's like a black square and you're like what are these weird buttons cm and and like i think it's an s uh, cm and then like up and down it's not really intuitive as to what it's supposed to be so to speak but uh yeah so oh, man and remember the first gen yo that was terrible man they had like nine cables you needed to plug in you you pull out this rat nest uh, of like a cable uh system and it's like uh micro hdmi to full hdmi to usb support with usb drivers and then you need to put a driver disc on it and then the second gen came out and there were a few less cables and you're like okay so i still need a driver then the third gen came out and all that went away the paper like three the paper like three pro you didn't need drivers anymore you literally plug it in it works with some cell phones given the right compatibility you plug it in and it just detects it and to a lesser extent you got to go like display settings on your computer and then find it but that's it and like they've come a long way from having that like spider web nest of cables that even we took like a day of work while we when we got it in back in like 
was that 2013 or something? We were like, how does this work? And we contacted them. They sent us a driver. They're like, you have to install it. And we're like, oh my gosh. So yeah, it's basically really come a long way. Yeah. So, I mean, they've evolved as a company. They still specialize in monitors, but they've done like two products that they have done crowdfunding campaigns for. Uh, not an e-reader, which was like, I think like a still six or seven inch device. And yeah. then they have a 10.3 inch variant, which actually can be, it comes with the HDMI out. So it can <clears> be used <throat> as like a smaller secondary monitor, but it's like, it's impossible to order. You just can't like order one and have it delivered, That which is why we don't sell them because it's like impossible to get. It's like crowdfunding and it's like, it's sort of like the remarkable you order today. Maybe you'll get in like six months or so, or like a lot of people who ordered the Gen 1 not an e-reader still haven't got it. So a lot of their comments on their crowdfunding campaigns are like, you know, you've opened up another crowdfunding campaign, but I haven't like received my order that I placed like a year yeah. ago. Yeah. So a lot of people email us that have invested in a desk on crowdfunding campaigns and just complaining that like it's been a year and they haven't received anything. And it's like, you know, I, I'm wary of crowdfunding campaigns just like as a general principle. I like to be able to just like place an order online and have it delivered at some point. Crowdfunding campaigns like the the buyer has like no protections at all, even if like, it's, the product it's is It's crazy because like we've been down that road and we actually launched our Netronics collaboration. We got Netronics to build our 13.3 and 6.8. And uh, we did a crowdfunding and uh, we shipped out 80% of the stuff. And then, yeah, we kind of, we felt like, oh man, that was uh that was, that was tough because like crowdfunding is like, you really got to fulfill. Right. And then uh, a couple months down the road, we were like, wow, we actually do have to wait till we get more orders to fulfill the other one. So it did take us a while, but we ended up fulfilling like everything, but we understand like when these companies have these crowdfunding platforms, uh, they end up like some don't even fulfill anything. There's tons of companies out there. Like Moby scribe took forever to fulfill stuff. There's those guys that make like those, uh, like portable printer things. You go like, they're like, no one gets their stuff. So like, yeah, I mean, really the light weird. phone too is the like, light phone too, the King grow, right? And people uh, ordered the King grow yeah. paid for and it. they never no delivered any of them. No, nobody has anything. We got one because they gave us a company sample. But if you go to these guys, indie pages, uh, King grow light phone, et cetera. Yeah. It's like, no one receives their stuff. It's really weird. So yeah, man. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I'm just wary just because like, I know everyone who's running those campaigns and I know a lot of people that just like never got their products. So it's yeah. like, and they raise millions, like uh, even like the Mutita phone uh, was supposed to be released April of this year and it got pushed back until like April of 2021. It's That's like that little thing with like buttons on it. Right. And a tiny little two inch. E -ink yeah. Screen. It's yeah, like yeah, basically Mudita. like um, the Mudita pure. Yeah. So yep. it's like the, it's sort of like a dumb phone where like, it's not meant to be smart. So it's like the type of e-ink screen that like you would give to your kid. And right. like, you know, you don't have to worry about them going on Snapchat because you can install apps on it. So it's like, you know, it's like the perfect phone to like give your like kid at like, you know, if you have an emergency call home or like, you know, when you're yeah. done school, call, call me or something like that. And like, yeah. you can feel comfortable giving them the phone because like it has text messaging as yeah. a phone call, as a clock. A calculator it's they like, can't go on like insta locked. and be like you know duck no update. it doesn't even have a camera so life yeah 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 uh today's uh, live is sponsored by nobody because nobody sponsors us but i am going to drink this coffee label facing me so you guys can't see what it is if you guys do want to sponsor us feel free and actually we don't do patreon and all that stuff but we are we had a meeting this morning actually prior to this um we got around uh, three or four of us and we said why and mike actually came up with the idea he's like well we don't do patreon and we do these uh uh, live videos to get some donations and stuff but why don't we sell merch so we're actually going to be designing some goody reader usable merch it's not going to be useless things that you're not going to use it will be like relevant things and we we came down to like you know usb uh drives and stuff like that with our little e logo on it so yeah if you did want to support the channel uh in other ways possible we know you guys are very supportive of us but we will be uh launching a little light merch store on us if you just you know want to brand brand us up and support us kind of thing that would be very much appreciated yeah we're not like going to be selling it like on youtube like because like no. youtube likes partners with like teespring and stuff like that uh we're going to be like doing giveaways and stuff so like uh you know water bottles keychains like usb cables like 
you know, just like bread and stuff that has like practical usage. We don't really want to like do like coffee mugs and stuff, like because like shipping that type of stuff, like it has a high oh, degree of dude, damage. No. Like, you know, when <laughs> yeah, a DHL right, person a like chucks book. something no. like from like, you know, I, I've seen a lot of how DHL and stuff delivers like in Canada, they're, they're, they're pretty legit and like good. But like in the States, I see people like half, you know, like a 30 feet and they just whip something onto your porch. And it's like, if it's a coffee mug, no matter how well it's hacked, it's going to no, break. You can't you know? even, you can't even ship like a, a coffee mug within your <clears> own <throat> country. Never mind like to Argentina or something where it goes on a plane and then some dude takes it off and chucks it on the conveyor belt. There is no way. And if you did, you have to have so much packaging around said mug that the box would be such big dimensions. It's just, no, no, we're going to do like useful things, things you're going to use, you know? Um, and, uh, again, it's, a, it's more of a support the channel. Obviously you can get USB drives anywhere. We understand that. So yeah. But, like, yeah, you know, like yeah. a lot of keychains are just like sort of like the little circles. I was thinking of like a little circle, but having like a little like loop with like a picture of like me and Peter on it, giving you like the thumbs up. So like every hey. time you're like, yeah. So like, like this, like, jeez. Could you imagine like having my face looking like this? Like, you know, the, like, you know, those things that have like the little like, jagged designs yeah. that you, you tilt and it changes. The, based on which way you tilt it, you can maybe find like the little holograms. And That's stuff. it. Yeah. The yeah. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. Or like on one side is like me and the other side is like you. So no matter what time, like, you oh know, no, you know, so one side isn't blank. It's either me or you. I think a lot of people would buy that. Like what? We could sell it for like $190 and like $190. Uh, <laughs> yeah, man. For yeah. like a keychain. $1 with $189 shipping. Uh, Michael, question came in from Moof. What happened to Pixel Qui or Pixel Chi? Why is it not on e-readers anymore? Uh, so uh pixel qui uh was i believe started by mary lou jepson and her husband at the time john ryan which was oh, like really think. yeah um so I, you it, specifically it, know that as is crazy <laughs> Well, because remember, we met them. At I, yeah, I remember. And we got we got samples. We had a sample of a pits, pixel key, pixel tree, chi, qui, whatever in our um, I think we had it in our studio and van. We did some videos on it. It was like a black slate. Right. Yeah. I, I remember. Yeah. Yeah. So initially, the company started under the one laptop for child program. And, you know, they wanted something like for like Africa, primarily that didn't have like you know, there's a lot of sun. And so a lot of people were like using these devices outdoors. So they needed something that like would not reflect light. So yeah. you use, it was sort of similar to e-ink. And then um, they expanded past that and started making like laptops that they would actually sell. Like they had early tablets and things like that. But, um, you know, the, the tech didn't go anywhere. And I think like another company like bought all their patents and like, I believe Mary Lou Jepsen actually like worked, she went to like Google X, which was like, I think she was like the founding like person in charge of like Google X, which was the Google X labs, which was like their moonshot program. So I believe that's where she went. And she's like, went off to like, have like an awesome career, just like being like, you know, um, I think for a while she was running maybe Qualcomm. Um, that's big. Yeah, that's big. so it's like she. Those guys, if you don't know, they make processors for a lot of consumer electronic devices, computers, phones, a lot of things. Yeah, so she's never been like CEO of anything, but she's been like high ranking executive of like a lot of different companies. I don't know cool. whatever behavior became of John Ryan. I never really like heard of him, but uh, or like followed his career, but I follow her on Twitter. And like, yeah, she, she's a prolific figure. But yeah, it's basically like some company bought like all the assets to Pixel Queen, just never did anything with it. So Thank you very like much, Move, for that question. And actually, if you guys don't know what he's talking about or what we're talking about, Pixel, Qui, or Chi, depending on which country you're in. Basically, you know how you guys are outside and you're on your phone and you can't see it? It's the opposite of that. It's, it's when there is... And uh, uh, abundance of light, you actually can see it because it utilizes ambient light in order to create a more rich image. Mike is into screen share mode, you can see. So that's basically what it is, is that 
it's the complete opposite of an LCD LED. Like, oh, I can't see my iPhone outside. Like, I need to max my brightness. No, it's it's it it relishes that. Yeah. So they did everything from like monochrome displays to like color mm-hmm. displays. Um, yeah. Uh, so. Uh, yeah, I mean, I wrote like a pretty, pretty prolific piece on like the rise and fall of like Pixel Qui. So uh, if you guys like want to know like all about it and about all like the, you know, the, the things at the time. So, yeah, yeah I mean, um, you so know, th- yeah, oh, go ahead. the Pixel Qui license was picked up by John Gilmore an activist, philanthropist, and founder of the Electronic Frontier Foundation. He's pretty actually well-known. And he released the patents under the defensive patent license. Uh, he said, you know, basically he told me, he, I actually interviewed him for this piece and says, like, I was an angel investor and later a VC investor of Pixel Qui. I lost multiple millions of dollars when the company failed and the stock became worthless. I had also loaned many hundreds of thousands of dollars. <laughs> uh, we sorted the shutdown of the company so everyone else was paid what they were owed, including all the employees and suppliers, except me. So uh, basically he got all the patents and stuff like that, but he hasn't really done anything. We actually have- I remember a- her. I filmed that on my on my camcorder back in like 2011. That's, yeah, so I filmed that, yeah. If you want to like go to like our website and like, you know, type in the rise and fall of Pixel Qui, I wrote it in like late 2018. So it's 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 current. And um, yeah, it's, it's a pretty like long read, but- um, it, it documents like where the technology was developed, what it was initially used for, talks about like the black and white and the color like aspects, uh, where it came from, where did it go? And eventually like what happened to like the company and what happened to all the executives that actually worked at the company. Yeah. Uh, you know, when, when companies like this have really compelling tech and, um, you know, for some reason or another release a bunch of different products but they just don't sell for some reason i think i think like they were almost too like too ahead of their time when this technology came like um ink was almost too entrenched you know for uh you know amazon was not going to ditch ink to go with pixel qui not even for like your amazon fire tablets because just going for typical lcd um is just like pennies you know what i mean so going with pixel qui just like the licenses and like everything were just like unfeasible like for low-cost tablets and for high-end tablets i mean you know like ipads next year are going to go with like micro like leds so it's like the same type of like tech that that's on your television with like yeah. quantum dots is going to be like on an iPad. So, I mean, it's either the high end for tablets or the low yeah. end. There really isn't yeah. any middle ground for like tech, like pixel Qui, which ultimately but really led to their demise. There is something that you can get right now. That's very, very similar to this. The Hisense Q5 has made a resurgence. It was discontinued a few months ago. It actually came back at the tail end of December. It uses the same concept. It, it needs ambient light in order to work. If you're in your room and it's kind of dim, it's okay. But if it's dark, it doesn't work. You can't see it. But it's really cool because it's our LCD, which is reflective liquid crystal display, meaning basically it's like your phone, but black and white. But it's really cool. And it's available now. It's like current tech, like 2020, 2021 tech from Hisense. And Hisense has been killing it recently in the uh, handheld e-ink department. They've made RLCD. Hisense has been around forever. They make TVs and refrigerators and hi-fi systems and all that stuff. So Hisense is uh, a longstanding company. And they actually do have that. So Move, uh, you were the one who initially answered the question, uh, asked the question. If you did want something similar to Pixel Qui, it's not color, but it is really cool. And it comes in a 10.5 inch shell. Uh, I'd recommend that. And since they came back, we've been selling a bunch of them. So they're kind of cool. Uh, yeah. I don't know if, I, wait, hold on. Let's just address that right now, Mike. W- were you waiting for me to say something or am I delayed right now? No, I was waiting for you to like continue. Okay, because <laughs> you were just staring and I'm like, am I, am I going to say something? Do I need to change my internet? Because I really... Oh yeah, that was another question, Mike. I, I'm going to get this one to you. Uh, a gentleman earlier on here asked, 
is there any news on the next gen Kobo Forma, Kobo Forma 2, question mark? Okay, so uh, like when did the Forma come out? Like late 2017? 17? No, I don't think that old. It's it was like either it was late uh, late 2017 up, or early 2018. Now we gotta um, look this up, guys. <coughs> oh, you're uh, okay. Yeah, 20. Uh, actually, no, it's the opposite. You're you're off by year. It's late 2018. It was released November 2018. Okay, so you know they initially developed it early on in the year. It yeah. had production. So, so it's 18, 19, two, 20, 21. Dude, it's so it's like almost two, three. Almost yes. three years old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crazy. Yeah, so that and the Clara HD are, like, due for a refresh. Um, yeah. I believe that Kobo sometime this year will, will do a former refresh, and they'll have, um, like, audiobook functionality. So Good. Kobo has, like, an unlimited service where you can subscribe to to download audiobooks and stuff, or you can yeah. just, like, download them and pay as an allo card basis. Uh, so I think it's called, I don't know, Kobo audiobooks and it's part of Kobo plus now. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's something that they do on their apps where you could like buy and listen to audiobooks. They have audiobook players and stuff, but you can't do it on their e-ink e-readers and e-ink readers are like their flagship devices. So, um, Kindles have been, you know, playing audible audiobooks for like three years now. And yeah, they're, yeah. they're, they're pretty well the only people in the market that are actually doing it. So Kobo really has to, they need to step up and not just let Amazon control the e ink audiobook market. They need to make yeah. a play. And uh, because the Forma tends to have new features because it's the flagship device that's the most expensive one, they want to give people reasons to upgrade. And I think audiobook functionality it would, would have be a to. good upgrade. And you've just answered another question, which was what's going to be in the new forma. I, everything that Michael just mentioned. So go back uh, 25 seconds. Um, if you guys uh, did not realize, if you missed it in 2020, that just ended um, Kobo did release a unit and it was a complete miss is a complete flop, very out of character because don't get us wrong. Kobo is a very high end company. Kobo Forma was the best e-reader of the year of 2020. And it's two years old. There's still the best e-reader of the year. Kobo released the Nia. It was it was very underachieving. It was a six inch. It was made in a different plant. It, it offered a, a completely different approach. It was a six inch. It wasn't necessarily replacing anything. It's just out of the blue. Uh, kind of a big mistake. The packaging was off. The pe you know the the layout was off. Everything was just a little out of sorts with it. It didn't add up. And, it sucked. Um, it was a complete miss. And uh, we just posted the review if you guys do want to see it. But that was the latest offering from Koba. Kobo, Koba, Koba was uh, was like boom, 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 really good stuff. And then the Nia came out, and we were like, "What is this?" And then we just you know burnt past that. And then we're like, "Anything else coming out, Kobo?" And nothing came out. So we have high hopes for them because the Forma was, like I said, it was two years old and it was still it beat out all the competition, beat out the Oasis Three LTE, uh, 4G. Uh, uh, what do you call a uh, 32 gig, the gold edition. Like it's a, it's a good, it's a good e-reader all pun and no pun intended at the same time. It is really good. So yeah, so, we have high hopes for that. So was speaking that? of good e-readers, um, you've been reviewing a lot of weird tech on Dude, YouTube lately. What have we been getting recently? Pens, digital stationery. The last four samples companies have sent us have been digital stationery. I'm not even kidding. Stadler, uh, we reached out to them and they said, uh, and we like, Hey, uh, we noticed your guys' um, stuff works on like HP touchpads. And they're like, yeah. And we said, well, things that typically work on HP touchpads work on everything else. Supernote, Onyx, Boyu, MobiScribe, King Jim, everything. And uh, remarkable. And it did. So they sent us two pens, the classic and the jumbo. Really cool. Very interesting feel. Very nice and grippy. Nice. Uh, it's a rubbery approach. It's very uh spongy not in a bad way the mitsubishi i oh, sorry yeah go ahead. yeah i mean go ahead. It's, it yeah. looks like a pencil it feels like it, a pencil it's made of wood made out of wood uh they're two different lengths about two inches different from each other the uh jumbo is a chunky version with an eraser on the back the classic is a long hb number two kind of pencil made out of wood made in germany very good pens someone pointed out that they were made someone was like technically they were made years ago and to their credit they were but they've never been more relevant now because there are there's like 15 choices just in the e-reader world alone that these pens work on uh, they are available on our site they ship anywhere in the world 
Uh, they, um, they're very nice to feel. If you want a, a different type of feel, the lightest pen ever, five grams, super lightweight, high-end pen from Mitsubishi. Made it's, Japan, lighter than, it's lighter than it's lighter than the free plastic stylus that you get when you buy, you know, like when you it buy is. the Super Note or you buy yeah. the, 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 any of the boy you like books, yeah. any of the Onyx books, like they all come with like the same plastic stylus. That's it. And that weighs more than this mitsubishi pen it's mitsubishi pen mitsubishi's known for like cars and stuff and you know fighter jets in the war and stuff we did a little piece on them they have a pen they've had pens for years uh actually i think i have uh uh anyways yeah they have they make pens like high-end kind of you know clicky pens and uh, signature pens and pens you put in your pocket that are worth 200 bucks whatever this pen right there michael's showing you is made completely out of wood it's made in japan it works on everything from just digital Wacom pads that transmit to your computer works on the Samsung galaxies. It works on HP touch pads. It works on some uh, Lenovo devices and it works on all e-readers. This one is so lightweight. It's so agile in your hand. It's like, it's not even there. And I know people like weighted pens, people like 30 gram pens, super note, heart of metal, the Lamy pen, they're all chunky, heavy pens. And I, I appreciate that, but it's nice to have the opposite. It's nice to have one that doesn't like hurt your hand when you're writing, you know, endlessly. And this is really cool. It's, it's a really cool looking pen. It's a pencil, but it's like, it's got a digital uh, cartridge in there. It's just really nice. Yeah, so you could replace the nibs on it, uh, mm -hmm. just like so. Basically, oh, perfect, thanks, the, Mike. There's the, the Stadler, yeah, the Stadler and uh, the Mitsubishi pen. So you can see, like, it's almost smaller. It's about the same size as the typical, pretty close, yeah, pretty, you know, plastic styles that you get, except yeah. it's like thinner and it's like made of wood, so that makes it like lighter. So this is like the the Stadler pencil here. So you can see the the, the Stadler Classic you know, how small the Mitsubishi pen is. So it's all a matter of like personal preference. Do you want like a longer pen or do you want like a shorter one that weigh, like weighs less? It's it's personal preference, but I mean, um, they're, they're pretty cheap and you can sort of see like, um, like a, you know, what the nib looks like in the, yeah. in the, in the you know, wooden type of design. And then- Yeah, so there's the wood pencil like uh housing and then there's like a cartridge inside that holds the nibs so yeah yeah so here's actually like a picture of the stadler two stadler pencils so you the you know the the classic and and the other one so that you can see how flop you is know a flop <laughs> yeah so they're yeah. cool man they're really cool and like digital stationery has been on the rise a company we uh, reviewed last week called King Jim. They contracted out Netronic, uh, Moby Scribe, a couple years back, contracted out Netronics to build their device. Same as us, we contracted out Netronics to build our device. They made something called the Moby Scribe. It's 6.8 inches. Years down the road, today, nowadays, King Jim, a Japanese company, found out we have an outlet, a, ja a Goody Reader Japan Inc. outlet in Japan. And then uh, I said, yeah, we operate in Japan. And they're like, well, let me sell and send you a sample. They sent us an e-reader. It's called the King Jim uh, Freeno. It, it, Note-taking, it's all English. It runs APKs. It has Android 8.1. It's really cool. USB-C, nice gold design. It's a really cool package. Um, a week later, we, we hit them up and I was like, your device is cool. You got anything else? And they're like, we do. We have a, uh, a memo pad. It's, a, it's in its own housing. It's, a, it's an e-ink memo pad. It runs true e-ink with a resistive touch like a Nintendo DS. And uh, it's called the uh, Kakumiru. It just basically means like when you write, you read. So yeah, it's really cool. And like it's true e-ink. So we're seeing this rise of digital stationery outside just regular e-readers regular everyday like note takers there's all this new stuff coming out you're probably gonna uh, screen share well you're yeah fine. i kind of yeah. want to show them like what we're actually mm -hmm. talking about because like absolutely with, with these sort of devices you sort of like have to like you know what actually it's see actually it. i hate doing this oh you're screen sharing okay cool i'm gonna run away for a sec uh yeah so this is like the what Peter was mentioning about like the, the digital memo pad. Yeah, it's basically just like the type of product that like, it's like really small. It's made of like e-ink, but it has like limited functionality, like to do lists, like yeah. date, you know, date, time, calculator and stuff. 
Yeah, um, you know, that makes it like cheap. It's like what, like a hundred and like thirty-four bucks. So it's really cool. Um, uh, yeah, it's it's like pretty, you know, it's it's like 30, 99 memos, 30 cards as a micro SD capable of like, you know, uh 32 gigs, so you could like store a ton of like extra like memory and stuff like that, which is like I don't know, kind of cool, I guess. Uh, yeah, it is. And if you, um, go back to, yeah, I got it. I had to run to the other room. I actually got it. It came in and I was like, oh, cool. And it's not too bad. And it has like a, this stylus is not active. It's just passive, meaning it's basically just a stick. You could, you, you could basically use it with a chopstick. It's the same kind of thing. The sharp was using. It's the same kind of thing the Nintendo DS uses or those signature pads that like, uh, when you sign for your groceries, it's just resistive. So you can't use Wacom on it, but it does have a magnet snap. It comes in this format. Or you can, you can see there's little rubber stoppers. Or actually, you can put it tabletop upwards like that, too. So when it's on your desk, you can write notes and be like, oh, yeah, pick up groceries. And there's a few little UI elements up top. We haven't gotten into it yet because we just received this and we received a ton of other styluses. Most important takeaway of this, which has actually arise recently, is batteries rather than lithium ion. When you have lithium ion, a little thing like this triples in cost when it comes to shipping because very few companies will ship with the lithium ion battery like one found in your phone. So that's why a lot of thermometers, hygrometers, even the progress technology manga reader, the Kakumiru, the Kaite, all of these don't have lithium ion in it because it's easier to ship. It's easier to ship to emerging markets like Malawi and Botswana. South and America. Country. Yeah, exactly. Which have like and, huge import. Like, oh, dude, for Brazil, us, or... Ecuador, even some places in Europe have like 54% VAT on some items. People are always like, please don't ship to me in uh, Brazil. Ship to my redirect because if it has like a lithium ion on board, it's going to cost me a lot of money. That's where these items actually come into play because batteries are universal. Triple A, double A, A, D, C, they're all universal. You can go to Brazil, put batteries in this, and you can start using e-ink and it's not that expensive they're not like four hundred dollars five hundred dollars so yeah the batteries like will last you like oh, six forever, months before dude, yeah. before you have to like replace them so it's not like yeah. every few weeks you're gonna have to like swap the batteries like right. like the sega game gear had like what like oh six hours God, before dude. you had to like i remember change, that. like eight batteries do you remember that you yeah, six man, batteries three in each side i remember before school my brother had a game gear and i was like i'm gonna take i it. had it too that was my first yeah. count my first handheld yeah and it was color too that was the yeah. first color handheld a color color not like game boy black and white color you put six batteries in and i remember taking it to school and we're like yeah and my friends were crowding around me right it would die before lunch and all six batteries are gone. I tell my mom or something like, oh, you got to go to London Drugs or something, get more batteries for my game gear that keeps dying every day. No, no. E-Ink does not have that consumption level. And these devices are emerging and digital stationery is on the rise. And it is all of the rage right now. And a lot of you guys might be saying, what is all this stuff? You know, I don't understand it. This is going to be not the norm, but it's coming up. Digital stationery is on the rise. It really is. Yeah, totally. Yeah, man. Yeah, like I'm, and and I'm happy to see, like, I guess you know, like the Mitsubishi pen came out in 2020, so it's like yes. it's new. It's true. Um, yeah. you know, a lot of the, the digital, other digital stationery, you know, come, it's come out like a couple of years ago, like the Stadler, a couple of years ago. Yeah. yeah, the Lamy, but it's like until we started really reviewing these things and like mention them on youtube live doing reviews and stuff like that people are introduced to it for the first time and like yeah. you know even us a gritty reader like these these companies fly under the radar because like they have their hands in so many different cookie jars like you know like lammy stadler uh they pretty well are known for making pencils making pens you know like uh yeah this is this is what mike's talking about this is a lammy pen see it says lammy this is a pen. It's just like a 
do 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 i'm going to scribble my notes pen this isn't a digital pen they sent this to us as a little thank you for ordering the um when they gave us the sample of the digital stylus but they make pens like mitsubishi makes pens the type you take to your boardroom and they're like please sign this document you're like sure and you pull out your 200 dollars pen you know what i mean that kind of thing so yeah, yeah so all these guys make other things yeah and so because they make so many other things uh you know, they, they flew under our radar for release or just to know about it. And like, no one was bringing it to our attention. Like, Hey, are you guys going to review this? Or, Hey, are you guys going to yeah. review that? It's like, nobody was asking us about these. And then as we were like looking into, into digital stationery for one to like boost the number of stylists, like in our store, but number two, to actually do reviews of them, like on our yeah. website, because who yeah. else, who really is doing reviews of like, all of these different like styluses, like the, the, the Mitsubishi stylus, the, the Stadlers, the, the Lamy stylus, there's hardly anyone that actually does reviews on this. So it's like, well, hey, you know, we review all these digital note-taking devices. We might as well like do reviews on like the different alternative stylus or styli that you could use to like, you know, supplant like the, the, the stock one that comes with it because Onyx only makes one stylus. They don't offer any yeah. others. You know, boy, you, uh, you know, some like remarkable, they have two that you can choose from. So it's a bit of a selection, but not very many, you know, so we want to draw attention to other styluses that you can buy that work on all these devices. So if you want an alternative that's made of wood, that feels like a wooden number two pencil, or you want something that has more pressure sensitivity, uh, is heavier than the default stylus. Maybe you like weighted st stylus. Like for me, I like a stylus that like is made of metal that is, you know, that weighs like over 24 yeah. grams. That's because right. I, I like the, I like, I like, you know, I like stuff that's like heavy. I find that like in my hand and drawing, it's easier to draw and not like mash it down. Like with a, like a cheap, you know, $5 like plastic stylus that has no it's, weight to it. It's absolutely I, I find, true. Yeah. I find it so hard to draw with those like cheap styli. So something with like heavy, I don't have to press as hard because the style itself is weighted. So you automatically have like weight touching the screen. So I don't have to press as hard, which means the nibs last longer yeah, and right. I don't have to replace yeah. them that often. So buying a heavier stylus, like for me, I don't have to buy nibs nearly as often as the people who have lighter styluses and have to press right. hard. And they're also different now, as well as Michael's been saying. And actually, because uh, a lot of our staff is off for the holidays, we've been picking up the phones and stuff. I did have a nice conversation with an Alex M, I'll just call him, on the phone. He called in and we picked up. He actually asked, um, you know, there's so many that came out recently. Like he actually, he was like, how does the Stadler work on an Onyx? How does the Mitsubishi work on a, um, on a Remarkable? And then I was saying like, yeah, you know, they're, they're honestly, they're not just like cookie cutter. They're all very different. The Stadler's really long and it's spongy. Whereas the Mitsubishi is lightweight and it feels good on a glass screen, you know, and the Super Note Heart of Metal is like 25 plus grams and it's really weighty and you can put the cap on the back for balance. And the Lamy pen's really chunky and like the Moan has a pen and there's all these pens iReader has two pens they have the x pen which is like crazy high spec quality and uh yeah man there, there's a lot out there and there was more than just saying oh you don't like the stock pen buy a super note because at one time there was basically the stock pen the super note pen that was it no one was making pens they're like 10 plus pens now the 12 plus pens we did a video on the top 10 styluses because there's that many to actually do a video on now and uh yeah like as mike was saying nobody knew who king jim was king jim is a company that's been around for a long time in japan i didn't even know until they reached out to us king jim has two e-ink devices in their lineup that use actual e-ink from e-ink and we didn't know about it because they just scooted under the radar but because we have canadian japanese and american audience we can bring things from each specific market and make it international that's primarily what we do when we gain partnerships with all these companies king jim has two devices that are e-ink that are completely relevant to what we do in their lineup and we didn't even know about it so that's what mike was saying is that there's all these companies that you know may or may not have been making things for a long time but until it hits us and it hits your guys's ears no one knows about it so that's why this thing exists that's why the king jim freeno exists the mitsubishi pen so yeah and that's why you guys like subscribe to our youtube channel 
watch us live, you know, read our reviews on our yep. website is because like we introduced you to like products like this that like That's right. no one else is telling you about. Like who else is reviewing as the like the King Gem? The King like, Gem. You know, That's what I did when I when I heard their name, I was like King Gem and I Googled them. I couldn't even find them at first because you have to like uh, I think you have to go King gym together or something or some contractor comes up and it's a japanese only site and they make like translators and sticker printers and then you look under digital memo and there's e-ink products and i was like what and then that's they that's when after they told us they're sending us a sample i looked them up i'm like what i told mike and he told the other guys and we're like where are these guys been right like why didn't we know about this so yeah it's just kind of funny that way uh, yeah, so I have some other stuff to talk about. All right. Yeah, we basically covered the products. Uh, so we'll go to some questions after Mike does his uh, little blurb there. Yeah, so we just reviewed the Boy You Like book P6. Uh, uh, we posted the review I'm gonna like, hold it. like there it is. six hours ago. Uh, yeah. So tons of pictures, <laughs> unboxing, review videos. So uh, this is like 129 bucks. It's and good. I, and, and like, I think that like, this provides like more okay so for like 129 dollars it's competing against what like the entry level kindle yeah. the barnes and noble nook low light 3 Kobo. the kobo nia yeah, like that, yeah that's right yeah, yeah. you know for the most part though that's like the price like the paperwhite costs more like the kobo clara costs more so the forma I, the oasis all that stuff costs more yeah, yeah exactly there. so this like android 8.1 sd card with 120 gigs of expandable storage uh, Google Play builds right into it. And uh, downloadable apps, goodie reader, app store. Yeah, so yeah. like it, it's it's the best $129 that you can spend right now uh, buying this. So that that that's basically the summarized like my review. Yeah. Um, if you have a Kindle, it's actually easier to set it up now because they have introduced a system that I'm, I'm not sure a lot of you guys are familiar with. Uh, it's called fr Frustration Free Setup. It was launched in 2018. It was pretty well like um, part of like the Amazon Alexa devices, the, the Alexa microwave, uh, the, the wall, the smart wall plugs and stuff like that. And so what they did with those is they stored your Wi-Fi password in the cloud. So like with like AWS and stuff like that. So when you plugged in a smart wall outlet and you went through the configuration setup, it would automatically connect to your Wi-Fi network that if you connected up like a fire tablet before it remembered right. your, uh, the Wi-Fi password. So if you have a Kindle and you say buy a new Kindle, when you actually are going through like this, the setup, you don't have to actually like select your Wi-Fi network, enter your Wi-Fi password, it'll remember all of that. So it'll automatically connect. Uh, the only thing that it won't remember is if you change your Wi-Fi password sometime mm -hmm. before you buy a new device, then you'll have to enter it again. But yeah, it's something that a lot of people are unaware of, but you know, it's part of Wi-Fi locker <clears throat> and uh, it's been around on the Kindle for like less than a year. So uh, I just thought I'd bring it to like people's attention that like I, I one have, otherwise I have a question. I have a question, Mike, over yeah. here. Did you say Alexa microwave? Uh, yeah. That's you. You're not. You're not joking. It's a real thing. Yeah, yeah. So they, they yeah, they have a micro smart microwave with Alexa that you could like, Alexa, heat my burrito. And no, like, they don't. Yeah, they do. I mean, I'm not. I'm not illiterate when it comes to technology. Obviously, I'm in the scope. I have a Fire TV Cube latest gen that Amazon sent us directly. It has Alexa. I know all that. Turn on your lights. All that stuff. I did not know they had a microwave. I that just missed me. Yeah, like all it came out a couple years ago. They have a Alexa microwave. You put your hot pocket in there, and you're like, "Alexa, what's up? Make my hot pocket." Yeah, you know. Um, really, I know you do the command, and it makes it. I did not know they had that. That I thought you were have, joking. Like they have they like it, ovens with Alexa in it now. It's like they basically for everything from TVs to like yeah. every every tech item that you would have in yeah. your house that it's not Alexa enabled. They're basically making it Alexa enabled now. So you could have like just a total smart home if you want. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. all the lights, like, you know, uh, controlled with like Philips Hue and like just have like a little like mesh set up and just, you know, that's what I did like before. Uh, I, like I in remember. my older apartment, it's like my entire apartment. Dude, your place was, was hooked lights. up. You, you were like, hey, hey. And I'm like, what? You're like, 
watch this alexa do this alexa do that turn the lights on do this and then a couple things didn't work but you know for the most part it's it was uh pretty tony stark of you man yeah that was cool yeah so i mean uh you know everything from like thermometers like to like um you know turning on your air conditioner could be hooked up to alexa now like the you know the nest like uh like doorbells slash video things that you have like it's all like alexa so i mean you can like make your entire house smart now and it doesn't really cost very much like someone the- just said that they said uh, uh friti are you permata astri i'm she's indonesian i don't know how to pronounce that just said uh imagine a home built with only amazon alexa appliances like only you know what i mean From yeah i mean lamp, everything you could pretty well now go with whoever you're 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 set up with so uh apple home uh you know you can just buy like you know the like apple things because like you know like uh apple tv ipods iphones it's like you know apple home you know buying the home pod uh you know a lot of this stuff is like set up with like home kit or you could go with like alexa um you know with a with google home you know google has like their own Mm -hmm. home ecosystem Mm -hmm. so like yeah, a lot yeah, of this Google. stuff is cross compatible. So like the Philips Hue setup could be set up through Alexa or it could be set up through Google or it could yeah. be set up through Apple. Like a lot of it has like cross platform, like integration, which is the major selling point. But, you know, for me, a lot of that stuff is like come down in price. Like Philips Hue, I remember like a four pack when I first got them were like $39 each. Now they're like half that price or less, you know, to actually buy like a Nest like, yeah. you know doorbell slash like it has like a camera on it so you could actually see who's at your door like so a lot of doors like especially in houses they don't have like peoples in it apartments do but like a lot of homes don't so who do you know you know is someone knocking at your door like yeah. you know who, who who's there and you don't really know because like uh a lot of, a broom. Who, yeah who, who's there <laughs> this way it's like you know you could have like a video like feed right by the door or on your yeah. smartphone so it's like you know you hear the doorbell you put on your smartphone and you can see who's act- actually at the door i think uh, that's yeah. pract- you know really useful it and is. you you know it just is basically you don't have to like replace your doorbell that's on your place it's just basically like an electronic doorbell that's like hooked up to all the tech in your home so it's like you know if your sound bar is networked to like your computer, it'll come out of your sound bar or yeah. it'll come out of your computer speakers or, you know, your phone will ring or something like that. So it's, it's not like you have to do all this like electrical, like rewiring and stuff like that. You could just basically just sticker it to like reach yeah. your door. Um, I was going to, uh, sorry, I w- we, we've been talking a lot for three minutes and I did some comments. Did you, or did you not mention your Amazon go- uh, glasses? Oh, uh, you ha- you got Alexa glasses. Yeah, I don't know where they are right now, oh. but uh, yeah, yeah, it was it's sort yeah. of like the day one type thing where you have to be like invited to like do it, and it's basically like smart glasses. Uh, it doesn't have any UI mm-hmm. elements or anything, but it has like um on the you know on regular glasses how it goes over your ear. There's two speakers. And you can actually like listen to music or podcasts and stuff like that. And it'll actually like, you know, you'll be able to hear it. Uh, but a lot of people outside of your range of vision won't hear it. So it's kind of cool. It's better than like wearing over the ear headphones or like, um, you know, stuff like that. Or like, you know, uh, earbuds and stuff like that. Yeah. They're you know, I, I got prescription lenses on them and stuff like that. They That's were like, what I was going to say. They're not one size fit all. They're actually frames that you need to go to your actual glasses shop. Uh, sorry, I don't wear glasses. I don't know what it's called. And they put the lenses in there so that it's now your set of glasses, right? Yeah. So if yeah. you need like prescription frames, you can get them swapped out. And there's like instructions that come with it where like the glasses can't be heated because there's all electronics in them and yeah. stuff like that. Or you could just like wear them as like just normal glasses, just I guess to look cool and stuff like that. You know, some people just wear glasses that aren't prescription, that aren't sunglasses, that like look like glasses just to, you know, for fashion and stuff like that. And that's totally cool. Um, yeah. So um, the one thing I don't like about them, which is why I haven't really done a review or anything like that, is that their touchscreen interactions are weird. A lot yeah. of the times, like, I'll readjust my glasses 
And if you're talking on the phone, just tapping once will actually hang up the call. To oh, answer so a call, if you're like, if yeah, you're- which is why when we talked on the phone when I was wearing my glasses, I kept disconnecting because like, I was wondering I, what you I, were doing. Yeah, so a lot of times I would just go like this to like re like readjust them or like you know my hair was like on them, so I like readjust them on my ear and just touching them would hang up. To answer a call, mm. you need to swipe, and I thought that like just swiping to like disconnect and like tapping or something like that like just a single tap for people like i don't think was the right like call for swipes and gestures yeah it should have been like scroll like this to like hang up a call instead of yeah. to answer a call you um, know that's that's th- that should have been implemented as a as a uh, as a a fail proof uh feature for example we had some Chinese company send us those little earbuds. And uh, if you tap it once, nothing actually happens because it's to prevent people from accidentally hitting it. So they have commands that are long tap, double, or like three, and then it does different things. Because yeah, as Mike's saying, if you're adjusting your glasses, it's like, oh, and call. And it's like, I didn't mean to do that. You know, yeah, let totally. me have some threshold of making a mistake. Uh, some people said, uh, I didn't even know there were Alexa glasses. And then Darren said, you can only buy them in the States. Yes. Yeah. It's only us like only. So I had to like use like a redirect service and it, it like, it added an extra few weeks to like the overall delivery time, but it got right. here. So yeah, it's like most like Amazon day one type stuff, but the Alexa buds, you know, sort of a, uh, Amazon's own earbuds. It's like States only. It's like Amazon is like habitually for a lot of their products, just States only. And they never bring it to like other uh, markets. Echo buds um, are available on Amazon, amazon.com only. And they're just currently unavailable. They're in this like endless, currently unavailable stasis mode. So you can't even buy them. Uh, yeah. They probably <laughs> just sold out over like Christmas and stuff, you know? Yeah. You can do that thing where it's like available from other sellers and people are charging like $700 for them because they know that they're not available. That that always happens up and down with products. But uh, yeah, um, that's, uh, yeah, Alexa, that's cool. Um, I want to go back to the boy really quick, just because we got it here. This was so disappointing when we heard about it and received it because obviously you know this mike everything in their lineup's been like high spec high power high note taking they pioneered like glow lights on 10.3s using the jezitech so- uh, hardware and then we get this and i was like oh great another nia you know another six inch and as you use it seconds go by and you're like this is cool it it's like You guys can watch the review. I'll put the review in there. It's got a grid system that you can actually change. You can choose your like, you know, two by four, four by five. You can change the grid. Oh, it just killed Wi-Fi. Uh, It's got like a really nice organizational um, approach to all of your stuff. You can just drag and drop anything in the root of the device and you don't have to put them in a respective folders like some devices you just put everything in root and it organizes it for you apks it has a package installer it's got google play it's got an sd card it's really cool and it's only a hundred and something dollars i I was like you know this is going to be like a a, a bokeen diva where it's a six inch but it's like two bills or a tolino where it's just a six inch but it's like you know 190 euros no man this is like 129 bucks it's really cool. I was, I was pleasantly surprised. I was like, no USB-C, but it does have an SD card and that's super rare. And like, it doesn't have speakers, but you know, neither does some Onyx products and you just use Bluetooth. I think it was really cool. I think, I think at first I was like stupid decision. And then I use it a little bit and I'm like, amazing decision. It's good to broaden your lineup. Look at Supernote. They just have no taking. That's it. Nothing else. Look at Remarkable. No taking, nothing else. Boyu is now expanding a little bit. They're going into consumer low level stuff, but they also have high end like the Alita. So they're, they're, they're branching out their clientele and more people are buying them. And I think it was a fantastic move. It was a good move. That was smart. So what are the next things that are on the docket to review, Peter? Uh, on the docket, um, King Jim has sent us all of their stuff. Uh, oh yeah, well, we're going to be doing a review of the king jim uh, memo pad that's going to be next and um we might have a we're still in talks with iFly tech to get their ai note in and that is a 10.3 inch dictating centric device so it's really good for transcribing and dictating and translating and stuff like that but nothing really came of that yet and uh the w7 or a7 
uh, A7, right? The phone. The high sense A7. Yes. Uh, high sense is sending us a pallet of all of the uh, on the skid. There will be a box for our pallet coming in. Uh, it will be all the high sense stuff that needs to go out for everybody. And it is going to be some review units on board as well. So we're looking forward to that. Um, some people on chat right now actually have been saying I was very disappointed because the poke two color is gone. When we got when we told you guys that the poke two color was limited production, we were not lying. Our stock status on our website said like, you know, 25 items left, 10 items left, two items left. That was real. The poke two color is gone. They've changed the production line setup to no longer make that. It is gone. If you want to poke two color, you got to look at resellers because nobody has them. They were, we had a box of 50, then another box of 50 came in, then they were gone. So unfortunately, people are like, I have my uh, Marvel Unlimited. I wish I could have read it on color, but there's no other color device that'll run APKs other than like a Hisense phone. But even then, it's, it's a phone. It's glossy. It's kind of a miss. But uh, yeah, I mean, I'm sorry, but it, it's absolutely gone. So yeah. Yeah, um, there will be a number of new color EMs yeah, don't worry about that. In the next like three months. So, and they're all bigger than six inches. So uh, I can't mention their names because like I actually signed an NDA um, to get like the brief early. So I am- familiar. I'll mention them. No, I so, signed it too. <laughs> I, I won't, I won't uh, say anything. Yeah, so I mean, there's numerous devices from- two different companies that are going to come out in the next like three months and that's not including the high sense a7 6.0 inch right 6.7 inch e-ink phone they have a black and white coming out in january and they have a color version of that coming out in february so in around that same time we're going to actually see co a more color e-readers come out so ready your pocketbooks boys because the the ride's gonna get uh ha hot and heavy um this year is dude it's just gonna be like digital stationary and color uh, yeah this it, we, is the year of color this is it like, we've seen the we've seen everything that's hinting to it um there are so many th we've 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 had physical products in our hands at trade shows we've gotten scoops and you know personal packages that we're not allowed to talk about that came into the goodie reader offices that we had like promotional info uh, documentation, promotional stuff of what we need to talk about on the day. Uh, High Sense is pretty much an you know, open book. They're going to release some good stuff coming up. Yeah, and, they uh, announced yeah, man, it it's... like a well in advance. So it's... Yeah, everyone's like, oh, NDA. Sh and High Sense is like, High Sense. And they had like a picture of the guy on stage or whatever going like this. So it's like, they don't care. Uh, yeah, man, like it's going to be, it's going to be color. We've had three separate companies from different parts of the world send us like digital stationary stuff J japan germany china they're sending us pens and stuff to review i read a released yet another pen it's a white uh pen that actually onyx briefly used from a manufacturer in china they've kept it alive dude there's so many pens there's so many like fun e-ink things coming out uh, zalmi released like that new thermometer halfway through last year uh, it's running full e-ink. There's a lot of neat stuff around e-ink and it's been more plentiful and more available to everyone than it ever has. It used to just be an American thing, you know, e-ink in China, whatever they did, and then the Kindle. And now it's spread like worldwide and we're breaking a lot of things, making it worldwide. Yeah. So there's a lot of stuff coming out. Like, you know, if we thought that like the Poke 2 color and the pocketbook color for North American audiences was like the only game in town. Just wait to 2021. There's yeah. more companies getting involved in color. The companies that already released color devices are releasing second generation models and multiple models. So yeah. the and, and a lot of this stuff's just not going to come out like at the end of, of an end of this year. It's going to come out like in Q1. Soon soon yeah so like in the next three months so if you missed out on the poke 2 color don't despair because i think that that onyx is going to do the poke 3 color as the next ones and they're doing like note 3 colors nova 3 colors you know they're going to be doing things like that it's not 100 yeah. percent confirmed but they registered like the they already registered like the trademark for those names right so uh, they'll probably not refresh their entire product line like they did 
like in 2020 because they, they did, just did it yeah, yeah. they're yeah. gonna they're gonna release color <laughs> versions of all those devices uh I, and minus like the lumi because um the you know the new Kaleido 2 can't be put on its 13.3 inch screen yeah oh we have uh, someone joining us from jordan that's a country far away so hello uh yeah um i was gonna say mike you know who won't be doing color anytime soon amazon barnes and noble kobo a lot some people are asking when are the big guys gonna do it they're not gonna do it this is set for people to they basically what amazon kobo and barnes and noble do they basically stand back watch other people do things and then they react to it. They're more of a reactionary company set than innovative. And look at look at the track record. I mean, Sony did e-readers before everyone else. Uh, then Amazon got on board, you know, other companies did note taking and then, you know, uh, other companies get on board and stuff like that. Amazon didn't do glow lights first. They didn't do audio first. There's a lot of things that the big three or were once considered the big three. I don't know about Barnes and Noble right now, but anyways, the big three, they don't, they're not going to do color note taking. No, Onyx or someone's going to do that. You know, like Boyu is going to do something like that. Uh, other companies are going to do stuff like that. It's not going to be, you know, 10.3 color note takers from Amazon. You're not going to get the Kindle note, you know, coming out in a month. They, they, they barely did anything with their Oasis in the past, like four years. All they did is just make a new color and call it the Oasis three. They're not going to do color. Well, like to, to note taking standards. To, to be fair, these companies aren't sleeping at the wheel. Like no, one, no, of the, they're not. one of the interesting things about having our store is people from Amazon are ordering all the different color e-readers from us. Right? So it's like, right? you know, everybody from Barnes and Noble to Kobo to, um, they order you know, from us. to, they to add to Amazon to like a lot of even startups are, are buying multiple, you know, every color model that we offer just so they can test internally. Um, you know, we can't mention names or anything but we can actually companies but yeah it's like one of the interesting things about running our stores like we could actually ship out these like you know 50 units of a color e-reader to a company evaluating the yep. e-reader tech so i think it, like you know the first generation of cleto the color wasn't really that great i'm interested to see what they'll do with the second generation fixing all the problems from like the first you know I'm actually looking it up while you're mentioning that because it's true. We actually, uh, I won't mention names. We have, there's one right there. Yeah, California. We have shipped, this is nothing new too. We've been shipping to uh, labs, we'll call them, uh, from certain e-reader manufacturers for years. It's been since like 2014, 2015. We've been shipping all over the world. And reason being because we have uh, exclusivity um, uh, dealer um, agreements with lots of different manufacturers and people uh, we had a gentleman that was with one of these companies and uh, they ordered yeah an i fly tech an i reader a pocketbook and a poke two color and we were like what's up with that and we dived in a little bit we're like ah okay sure yeah box it up get it out because you know certain companies that develop things want to see what the current flavor is what what's available you know what what's 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 our what's our you know enemy what, how do we approach this so yeah the, definitely these companies are not sleeping at the wheel but it just feels like kindle's never gonna make amazon's never gonna make a 10.3 inch note taking color it's just not no. gonna happen a lot of people know, but they may, they may happen. like, they may adopt color, like depending, adopt color. depending on it, how good Ian Kalito two is. I know that like Ian Kalito one, because there was so many Chinese companies making devices, Ian yeah. was just like sold over the panels multiple times. So they actually had to devote, they ha only had one factory doing it. Now they have three. So, and one of them is located in the States for like, for companies that want to like, place orders in the states they could actually do color filter array production uh and hanover which is like in boston so they actually have a factory there making the second generation in Kaleido screens yeah. so for any of these companies like amazon barnes and noble kobo uh, moby scribe with tu uh, team uc and other companies uh they could easily like visit the factory check it out look at the you look at tester models and stuff like that place orders and have them like manufactured like right yeah. in the USA instead of like from China and stuff. So um, yeah, I mean, like I'm, you know, I'll have to actually have these e Kaleo two units in hands to really evaluate 
and put them side by side with the first gen to see like, you know, e Ink is totally what, what, what the improvements are, but yeah. you know, there's one thing between a white, like a, like a data sheet, you know, uh, and actually having a product, you know, it's, it's two different things. They could say that they fixed all these things, but in practice, did they, you know, or did they actually do more improvements than they, they've actually told me? Right. I don't know. So a lot of people currently are asking, is color draining the battery even more? So far, based on everything we know structurally, an e-reader is just an e-reader and there's a color array filter that is laid on top like that and it creates color. So if the, we don't know the actual deep dive breakdowns of the way they make them and we're a little bit skeptical because Onyx seems to have been able to turn this off. So the way it was originally planned, we can tell you, there was an e-reader, it's just an e-reader. Then they get a color array filter and they put it on top. It's passive, light just goes through it. It's not actually active. However, we think there might be some actual ribbon cable or something connecting the two for certain manufacturers because it seems that people are able to turn this off when based on the build sheet, they shouldn't be able to because it's just passive. So this is all gonna be answered with us getting the second generation. Yeah, the, the color of filter array is like actually plugged into like the like the motherboard in order yeah. to like draw power. It's just, it's, it's like the e-ink screen itself. Yeah. It, like it, it needs to be connected to a source that power could be drawn to it uh, because like, you know, power needs to be there in order for the states to change. So yeah, the color filter array is just, you know, to, for a simplified term, that's the way that it works. Yeah. It's basically just like a color filter array put on top of like the Ian Carta type of display, which, which is why with the, the first generation ones, you can get text at 300 PPI and you can get color at 100 yeah, PPI because right. only 4,096 colors uh, were able to be produced. Um, we don't know how the color filter array has been changed. Uh, we do know that it structurally has been changed, but not a total 100% redesign. All I know is um, better grayscale uniformity. So one That's of the, big the biggest issues, thing, because yeah. it was just gray, man. Yeah, because the color filter array was always on, no way to shut it off, is when you were reading like black, you know, when you're reading an ebook, traditionally, if you're, if you're reading on a Kindle, Kobo Nook, it's black text and a gray screen. With the, any of the color filter arrays, the, the, the screen was not gray. It was like this gradient color of gray where it was- It noticeable. was all the colors trying to produce gray showing at the same yeah, time. Yeah, but colors can produce gray. That's so, right. Uh, it was basically like, yeah, and dude, look I at mean, the eye reader. Look at the eye reader. That was the first guy doing it, and it was blue. It was blue yeah. as the day. Look at my jacket. It was blue as the day is long because because it was trying to show gray in a way where gray should have just been gray. It should have been the absence of color, but instead, color was trying to intervene to make the gray. So you got blues and little dots of green and you know browns, and it was just like it looked like a muddy mess. So apparently, that's been that's been fixed. Good. Uh, Good. They've also made it so when we were reviewing all these color e-readers and putting them side by side against like the Kindle or the Kobo, yeah. um, we noticed that how um, the color of filter array in conjunction with the e-ink screen really made it dark. You needed the front light on in order yeah. to really get bright and vibrant colors. That's also been changed. Uh, so you, you don't need to rely on the backlit or the front lit display in order to really kind of read what's on the screen. Uh, they've actually improved the lighting system as well. So I don't know how many extra colors, I don't know if the 100 PPI like for the colors has been improved. Uh, they haven't told me that yet. Cause like EX been on vacation for like a week leading up to Christmas right. to now. So, yeah. and then Chinese new year's coming up, like, you know, at the end of January, right? Like, uh, I think the start of February is the Chinese new year. Okay. Yeah, but, but man, they always take like a couple days in front and behind. So it's going to be like a, it's going to be a stint for sure. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, for us, like, um, you know, we're going to have to prepare for that sort of stuff because like, you know, the whole e-reader industry is going to be put on pause for like literally three weeks and, in, in, yep. you know, February. So no one's going to be working and no one's going to be shipping. No one's going to be that's crucial. Be 
yeah, yeah so if you what guys that means is that yeah go ahead like if you intend on buying something on aliexpress or jd or any of these like you know wish um you know if you're going to be buying anything from china anytime from like the oh, end of yeah, january no. to like basically all of february your stuff's not going to go out so it won't uh, they, they take chinese new year very seriously in china obviously it's chinese new year uh and it actually affects both sides of our business as well. That's affects- how COVID originally started was Chinese New Year. It was basically, um, every, yeah, like COVID, uh, it started like in Wuhan. And it was basically because of Chinese New Year, everyone's traveling. From, like, oh, you, you know, know how, how, it, how, it, how it escalated, not yeah. start. Yeah, okay. Yeah, right. because everyone was like, you know, it started in Wuhan, but like everyone was like visiting there for like Chinese New Year and then bringing the virus with them back to like wherever they were actually living. Ah, because yeah. a lot of people go home and spend time with their families. That's right. And, you know, people are professionals. They work in factories. They're executives yeah, yeah. in charge of companies. They they, they live in Beijing and, but they like, you know, visit like, you know, the interior, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you know, take a, tr- you know, plane or a train it takes like three days to get there. So like, yeah, they take it seriously. A lot of people like China's traveling, like almost everybody is oh, like dude, going got, home. Like a lot of people to move around for sure. That's, that's truth. Yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, basically yeah. Mike's uh, Mike spearheads, the news division, which means a lot of the news is e- ink related. I mean, he talks to the ink consortium, which is a group of companies on the daily and all of them are going to be taking time off. All of them are time off, which means the news is going to actually take a hit as well. Like it does every year. Uh, and the shipping department and logistics, which I usually spearhead is also down. And you know, what else is down review samples. So we actually get review samples every day from everything from, you know, things from Germany, Switzerland, everything. However, uh, we always see a lull in production as well, because we don't receive many samples during the holidays. So yeah. And as Mike was saying, if you're going to be ordering from Ali wish gear best, it's going to be even longer than it usually is. Um, so because yeah, no one's stuck- actually like no. shipping things out there that's right you know a lot of them like are don't even have stock themselves but they like that's get right. people to drop ship for them yeah. you know like third-party companies and all those companies are taking time off so like if the companies are answering emails they might just have like you know like customer service kind of working or like working from home or working on their computers as they're traveling and stuff like that but yeah i mean everyone's on skeleton cruise. So it's like, yeah. you know, and, and, and that doesn't really make sense to me because like, think about it, like Hisense is based in China, like for yeah. like their phones and they're going to be releasing the A7 color on February 1st. <laughs> so what's going to happen? Or, like they're going to be releasing it, but how are you actually going to buy it? If like every single Chinese company that's that could ship it possibly is going to be I know for like three weeks. I know. And it's a real thing. Like you will not, you will not get your stuff quickly. It, it's true too. It, it affects us too, because we buy skids of stuff. We have like, you know, wood pallets that land in Vancouver and land in Japan of just like boxes of stuff. And that's where we get your guys' stuff. We order from our distributors and um, yeah, man, we're, we're stockpiling this time because it, it, it's to a point where if we wanted a box of 10 shipped quickly from wherever to wherever, we can't do that. So we got to order ahead of time and yeah. get everything landed. We got to get our samples ahead of time. Mike has to get scripts and promotional info and like news stories ahead of time. Because when we hit this very long week, it's between like, uh, I think January 30th and like February 10th or something. It's like two to three weeks. It's really long. Uh, we just we don't have content for our company our, our stuff our, our news you know samples just content is dry so um yeah we're, we're always reaching out for other companies that aren't affected like it like things from japan the mitsubishi pencil king jim they're not going to be affected by that so you know we're building up those avenues and stuff like that so yeah it's a real thing if you guys are um and good for you guys we don't take days off here you can see it's like new year's around new year's and we're chatting with you guys so we ourselves don't take new new uh, i was off. writing on christmas eve and christmas That's, day we had a box of uh onyx products hit the japan office on new year's eve like actually new year's eve we had four boxes so um i actually had one of the people stay to help with that but then they all went and i was actually handling it all because uh we give our employees and contractors of course days off but we don't need to if we don't need to so i just like i was just opening stuff up and you know my son walked in he's like what are you doing i'm like don't touch it these are for customers so like we take 
a very personal approach as well. Like we have to get things done if we can't get, you know, if our operations are down, then we have to step in. So um, yeah, man, it's a real thing. Chinese New Year is like pretty long. It's like the moon festival in um, November or something. And like they take a lot of time off. So yeah, man, it's going to be a little bit of a delay there. So, you know, note worthy. Yeah. We just want to like, let you guys know. Cause like, absolutely. You know, we know that a lot of people buy products that are shipped from China. So there's going to be a huge yeah. disruption to like everything. It is. So we yeah. just still you know, want to let you guys know. Yeah. Bye. No, I'm kidding. But uh, yeah, we are an hour and a half and you know what, because we've been really hitting all the cu- the questions and concerns along the way, which I think is a little bit better because we like to keep the Q and a till later, but because it's an hour and a half, we understand people are going to sleep. It's 5. AM. I understand. So uh, we're taking a little bit of an approach where we answer questions as we chat. So we've done all that. We don't have any outstanding questions. So Mike, unless you want to do some quick bits, uh, we'll wrap it up. It's been an hour and a half and, uh, I'm hungry. Uh, yeah, so the Kindle Lending Library is going to close on uh, January the 4th. Uh, so uh, the, the like kin- two, tomorrow. Yeah, so uh, the Kindle like lending, the, the Kindle, okay, so it's basically the Kindle Owners Lending Library. That's the official, uh, like, no. Uh, it was um, basically had been going on for almost like 10 years. Um and it was like a way that you could like borrow an ebook for free from Amazon every single month. Eventually it was like included, like anyone who had a Kindle could like use it. And eventually it was like set up for prime members. Uh, in 2016, Amazon launched prime reading, which basically like gave you like 24 books that you could download for a month. It included like graphic novels, uh, audio books, magazines and everything like that. So it basically like, supplanted the kindle owners lending library so amazon's like over the course of the last six months they've pretty well been scrubbing the lending library like from their site like it's no longer mentioned or anything like that so yeah it's going to be like discontinued like tomorrow or on monday rather so yeah yeah, it's it's going to be gone so this isn't like going to be like available uh like anymore uh almost every single kindle model is out of stock uh in the u.s um it was like it was like that until like around christmas time uh just because like so many people are buying kindles as gifts uh the oasis yeah. the kindle basic the kindle paperwhite almost like every kindle model is like basically like out of stock yeah uh so you just you can't buy a kindle from amazon and i'm talking primarily about like uh amazon.com dot so com is the big one yeah yeah uh so that's basically like what's sort of known there's been a, like a lot of kind of cool things that we've like published like on the front page of our blog like if you just are getting the kindle for the first time a kobo for the first time uh a nook for the first time uh you can visit our page and we have sort of all you need to know about getting started uh, with those devices. So we kind of like break down what's Kindle Unlimited, uh, what's Goodreads, uh, you know, what's X-Ray, what are the different like things from system-wide dark mode on like the Kindle to, you know, what does the Kobo bring to the table, uh, you know, Dropbox and, you know, Overdrive and, you know, reading stats and statistics and, you know, what does the Nook bring to the table? So we do deep dives into like what's really separates those ecosystems from everywhere else and what you can expect from a user point of view. Uh, I was thinking of doing similar ones to like Onyx and Supernote and Boyu, but I I don't know if there's like enough of an audience for like stuff like that, you know? It's just Uh, amazing how newsworthy Kindle is. um, Seeing that, to be completely honest, they haven't really released a lot of stuff recently. If you look if at our they, e-readers for, for e-readers, uh, obviously Amazon has released a lot of third, uh, not third party, first party services around the e-reader scope. But in terms of the actual device hardware, like the Oasis 3 is not new. It's the same thing as the two. It's a different color. It's a little bit tweaked. It's the same thing. The shells just moved over. Uh, it's got warm lighting, etc. It's just amazing. You know what I mean? Like uh, when we have our meetings with uh, Mike and a uh, part of the news publication team that, you know, we're on the phones and whatever, um, Zoom, and they're always like, Kindle this and Kindle that. And I'm like, there's so much Kindle. Like here on like the the, the dispatch and the logistics side and the production side, it's like, I got nothing on Kindle. There's nothing to film. You know, there's nothing to send out. 
but then like the news is full force so it's just kind of interesting how like there's that divide that kindle is like doing so many things in the scope but the, the e-reader hardware is like nothing it's like barnes and noble the hardware is nothing it's just the, all the big three right now are doing like all these other things you know acquisitions and like uh you know like little little assistant things and, and getting rid of services and adding services but the hardware has very much just remained the same over last couple of years it feels like yeah just, well i mean the the e-readers are basically a gateway to the services that's exactly with it, like yeah. amazon Kobo, barnes and noble you know and that's um, why the upgrades to the hardware are so marginal they're so just like warm lighting it's like this is what i waited a year for it's like warm lighting that's it because in that interim they've released five other services you know what i mean got rid of the things they don't need released these all all like you know kind unlimited and and all these other things comiXology joined up at, via acquisition there's all these other things that play that are outside of the hardware itself so when we say kindle when we say amazon we're talking about like everything not the actual physical device so yeah yeah, like they, I think they changed Kindle free time, which was like their program aimed at kids and like they rebranded it to Amazon Kids at Amazon yeah. Kids Plus, where yeah. like, you know, you get like, depending on if you have a Kindle or a Fire tablet, they have like different things. So if you have a Fire tablet, it's like kid friendly videos, kid friendly this apps, uh, ebooks magazines newspapers and then on an e-ink screen you know you can monitor how much usage they can have like so if you don't want their kid profile to have more than six hours of reading per day um you know but it's like a subscription-based platform like kindle unlimited but they get like kid-friendly content so um you know as a parent would i really want to put restrictions on how much my kid could read i want to foster like their reading habits like so they could read as much as they want yeah i would put lo like limits on um you know watching tv so they don't turn into yeah. like a friggin' tv zombie or like screen limits on like an ipad or something like that that makes like, sense like, like jim carrey from the cable guy i don't know yeah. if i, I mean I'm not even that old, but I remember that movie. It was from the nineties, all, all his life. The character that Jim Carrey played in the cable guy, he just sat in front of the TV and became this weird, like, you know, stalker type guy that just did nothing but reference, uh, you know, popular culture that he watched on TV, facts of life, golden eye, uh, Hulk, all that kind of stuff is pretty funny. Yeah. Like, like my parents fostered my reading, uh, from a very early age, like oh, yeah? to be honest, like, I learned to read when I was about three and my parents like would buy like these like Star Wars read along records. And uh, they were like sort of, they weren't, they had, didn't have anything to do with like the movies, but they had like the actors from C3PO talking and yeah. you know, this and that. And I learned word correlation because like I'd memorized the records yeah. and like I eventually like correlated the words in the book as the record was like being played. So you're supposed to like nice. read along as like the record. Oh yeah, playing. yeah, yeah. Like an actual record. Yeah. So yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. you know, it was just one of the small ones, right? I still have, I, I actually uh, bought a few set four, here. 45. Yeah. I yeah, so. I did it. My mom taught me that. I was like, she's like, oh, grab a 45. I'm like, I don't know anything you just said what are you talking about records were before my time yeah so whenever i like went to like the supermarket they would buy me like archie books like so when i was they like, still really, have those yeah so yeah. when i was like really young like five or six you know that's what i was like reading and then yeah. around seven eight nine onwards i was reading sort of like young adult like fiction like dragonlance books and you know forgotten realms and stuff like that then, choose your own adventure yeah um, oh really oh I was yeah Oh yeah, no, that's cool. No, I, was, I was reading. I was reading a lot. So my my parents really encouraged me from reading. My brother didn't really like to read, and he's he's three years younger than me. Um, he's still living in Ontario where we grew up. But um, nice. Yeah. So you know, he didn't really read. He was more like into like music and hanging out with friends and like stuff like that. I was more of like the sort of the introspective. Like I reading was my only outlet because like yeah. we, I grew up in the country. So, um, and this is like Northwestern Ontario. So we didn't have cable. We had like three channels and like, you know, one was like a news channel and like CBC and stuff. And like, you know, there really wasn't a lot to like watch on TV. And my parents really didn't want me to like watch yeah. TV that much. Cause it's like, we had like a, like a big farm. We had like a, you know, 500 acres and like maybe 10 or 20 was developed into like 
gardens and stuff. It wasn't like a farm with cows and stuff like that, but it's like we grew all of our own fruits and vegetables. You didn't have stuff. Betsy outside mooing. No, but it's like, you know, they would make their own jams, like strawberry yeah. jam, rhubarb jam and stuff. So, and like, you know, potatoes would last us, you know, in the winter, certain perishables and stuff like that. So yeah, we just, we just grew our own fruits and vegetables and stuff like that. And like our lawn was like pretty huge. So I always had to like mow it and stuff. So they, they wanted to like me be like outdoorsy and like, you know, yeah. not get fat sitting in front of like the TV, which would, there was nothing really to watch anyways. So yeah. yeah, I just, I, I learned to read. So that kind of like fostered my like writing passion, which is why like I, you know, wrote from like a really early age to like, it's my yeah. profession today. You know where I learned to read? Right here. I have, uh, I've been born into the uh, 80s and I started playing games when I was uh, four, like legitimately. Uh, RPGs were actually like my legit gateway to reading. I mean, these these are before all the handout RPGs you get now where everyone talks to you and there's like famous people doing voiceovers and stuff like that. I had to read my games. Yeah, there's not younger. actually text Dude, on a screen anymore. It's hours, like all like voice. Hours and hours and hours and just, con- if you go through a 20 hour Final Fantasy game, 30 hour, even a hundred hour Final Fantasy game, and you just like break down everything you've read, you have read everything. It's, uh, you know, backstories that the, 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 the cleric told you all the way from like, you know, uh, 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 descriptions and riddles and, and hints. And, you know, you got to talk to everyone in town to find out, you know, where to dig to get the, the you know, like the, the special item and stuff like that. I was playing games like my whole life and most of them are RPGs. I have like three Final Fantasies framed on my desk. I'm not even joking. I just showed you. Uh, no, I, that's where I learned to read. And, you know, you might not think like, oh, video games rot your mind. I literally read nonstop for like, just it's just reading. It's constantly reading. Obviously, I got into pro gaming. I was a, I was a pro Smash player. That was just mindless controller movements. But when it came to RPGs and like Tales series, the Final Fantasy series, you know, like Dragon Quest and stuff like that, it's just pure reading. It's like nonstop, just reading text and text and text. So I can read very fast. I'm not as coherent and as like, you know, I, my vocabulary isn't as widespread as Michael's, which is why I don't write. But yeah, I can read pretty quick because that's what these games taught me. So it's, yeah, it's very interesting. Like people get reading from, you know, their, their, their upbringing from different places. It's very interesting. Yeah, you know, it would be yeah. nice to like, um, to, to find out what other people's reading journeys have been. Cause like, you know, I explained how my reading journey started. Like, yeah. you know, and then it stimulated like a lifelong, like passion of like yeah, I still yeah. read today. It would be interesting to see like how other, you know, people, um, you know, who were born like before me, I was born 79, you know, so my, you know, uh, you know, 10 years old was like the eighties. So, you know, a uh, teenager in like the nineties. So it would yeah. be interesting to like know people who are born after me, people born before me and kind of like do their reading journeys. So maybe like um, on the next live show, we can kind of talk about that and kind of get other yeah, yeah. journeys. And we can I sort mean, of- We get everyone from like Germany to uh, Indonesia, Philippines, Jordan, the UK. I mean, just about everyone is- joining in on this to some degree so uh, yeah it'd be nice to you know nice to see what uh, other people you know because we're all about e-readers here for the most part e-ink but yeah i mean you know reading is a huge part of e-ink obviously it was, it was its primary conception that was the reason e-readers were invented they they do all sorts of fandangled things now whippersnappers but they used to just be for reading so yeah, I mean, that was kind of interesting, but uh, we're all out of time. We're an hour and 40 into it. So yeah, let's um, let's wrap it up. All right, guys. So if you're not aware, we have a Slack channel. So if you want to talk amongst yourselves, uh, ask us any type of questions, um, have any ideas for other radio shows, if you want to be a moderator for our YouTube channel to you know, help uh, us out with answering comments and things like that um you can visit our slack channel i'll post like a link to it um so i don't yeah i don't know if like this link actually people were having Uh, problems with it yeah someone had problems with that they needed another link i don't know what it was it was a link that only you had access to or something but uh we'll put that in the description of this video afterwards um it doesn't help to put it in the chat because you can't actually access the chat 
live you can't alter it so uh, we'll put everything in the description we'll put the winner for the eye reader in the eye reader description after this and uh we'll get back to some more um contests uh coming up soon Hopefully. yeah i don't yeah. actually i'll that's okay we'll we'll do it in the vod after yeah it just doesn't need to be done now uh yeah thanks for 2020 everybody and uh 2021 is going to be equally if not better of a year and uh hopefully all you guys are still being safe and um being healthy and uh tuning into goody reader and uh it's very much appreciative that all you guys take the time to come in and comment and watch our videos and subscribe to our channel and uh yeah we give back in every possible way we can so uh yeah we'll put everything in the vod afterwards it'll be in the description of this video you can watch it on our youtube channel and stay tuned for more goody reader uh yeah guys we appreciate you watching us today um i put the slack address in chat but also write it like in the description yes. so um yeah you can do it it's like slack is sort of like discord but it's like a more grown-up version of it uh so i i believe it's like better uh, like a lot of the companies i really like to follow they all have like slack channels and everyone's like helping each other answering questions people has a question about e-readers like you know having a channel of e-reader enthusiasts like will be able to solve all problems pretty quickly so um as you all know we do this every saturday 5 p.m pacific 8 p.m eastern and whatever mountainous or other time zones you live in all over the world. We appreciate everyone from all over the world that joins us for these discussions. Uh, for goodyreader.com, my name is Michael.